You're tuned into the Now Morning Show where we've had beautiful conversations and will continue to do so, hopefully inspiring you this morning because this morning I'm joined by Cindy and Currency, the Head of Operations for the Digicel Trinidad and Tobago Foundation as they continue to put their currency <laughs> in the initiatives that help persons, young persons specifically, in the form of Digicel's Innovation Lab program. So it's really a pleasure to have you to explore this more thoroughly. Since this time around, or rather specifically, you guys focus on schools with disability students at the core. Why is that? What is the lab about? And why is that the focus, Ms. Currency? So, so first I would say um, thanks for having us here and giving us the opportunity to talk about this because it's really important. And students with disabilities, because within that space is always a people first language, right? So you don't say like a wheelchair person or autistic child, you say a child with autism or child. So we work with students with disabilities and schools that provide services and organizations that provide services to persons with disabilities. So the innovation labs in particular are part of our core mandates and that is really for us to improve opportunities for persons with disabilities. And everything that we've done over the past 12 years has been focused on that. So we've worked in areas of sport for development and education and therapy um, and inclusion. That's a really big, a big deal for us. So the innovation lab, it kind of crosses with our other pillar, which is digital citizenship. And we want to increase access um, for the, of the internet as well as access to technology for all persons but in particularly we try to focus for persons with disabilities, persons in rural communities, young people, vulnerable women, marginalized or underserved communities as we call them. Okay. So our innovation labs are really technology spaces that will be put into special schools. So these are schools and I think you asked that, these are schools that provide services to persons with disabilities. I love the underscoring of inclusion because we definitely know it's necessary, yes. but the way towards that often is bridged with technology. Beautiful often. initiatives. And that means we have a deadline that we have to focus on. We have a deadline. <laughs> It's on next week, Monday. So mm -hmm. we actually launched the call for applications on the 17th of June. So we've given persons about three weeks. Um, we know the schools. We also send them direct emails to let them know. Um, so we're giving persons some time to apply for an innovation lab. And in terms of the actual drive or the uptake so far, have you been getting a lot of schools coming through? Are we close to maximum? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we still want to give persons a little push. And, and this is what this is kind of the last call to let you know. Because, you know, I, what we've noticed in particular, we do our call for applications that we have... Uh, persons that wait kind of last minute to send in their application forms. And so we want to encourage them, if you are a special school operating in Trinidad and Tobago, um, whether you're a public school or private school, um, government assisted, and once you're registered with the Ministry of Education, we tend to look for that. And we want you to apply for, it is up to $100,000 in technology that you receive. So we're not giving the grant to the schools, but we're actually purchasing the equipment for them. And they get to set the tone and tell us what exactly they want. And we've given some examples in terms of what type of equipment that we put in our innovation labs so you can just check those boxes and in some instances the schools they will know they know their students they know what their needs are and they will tell us you know this is what we're interested in this is what we want to do can we you know facilitate and then we just try to make it happen I imagine it'll be kind of collaborative too because as you say they know what they need yes but granted that you are providing the innovation you may have some insights on what works best I imagine correct so in 2022 I don't know if you recall Ayinka we turned 10 the Giselle Foundation celebrated 10 years and it was a huge birthday for us and part of that was we commissioned 10 innovation labs in 10 sec in 10 special needs schools in Trinidad and Tobago and so what that meant is that we, we know what an innovation lab looks like. So it's a space that we're, that we're creating. It's not just the technology. So it's computers, it's smart boards, it's virtual reality, it's accessible accessories to use a computer because in some instances, some students may need a foot mouse or you know, they may need a large print keyboard or they may need a large screen, a large screen monitor while using their computer. So we have idea we have an idea in terms of what will fit in that space and then of course we make this space into a youth friendly space it's attractive it's fresh it's cool for young people to want to be in <laughs> the description she says it's cool <laughs> it's cool it really is it really is your excitement is really <laughs> contagious but you did mention as as part of the uh, eligibility or the criteria that you are aware of certain schools you know that the things that they may need are there other criteria that you look at to decide who is eligible no not really it's really just that so we 
want you to be registered with the Ministry of Education. Um, we want to know that you have a space. You have you must have a space. We're not going to build a, a, a computer lab for you, right? right? Like brick and mortar. So you have to have a designated space in the school. In some schools, a school that we worked with in 20, 2022, um, which is Wharton Patrick, she, the, the principal there decided she didn't just want a lab. She wanted to create a smart classroom. So we were able to use the equipment and put it into certain classrooms so that they can, every day, it's part of their curriculum, it's part of their everyday schooling. So there's also that opportunity. So you must have a space. We want to know that um, you have somebody, well, we also help provide training. That's why that's where the partnership with the ministry comes in. We reach out to our resources. They reach out to our resources at Digicel as well to provide some internet training for the teachers. But in most instances, a lot of these schools have IT teachers and they have the IT support from the ministry already. Right, lovely. Now, granted that you keep giving beautiful examples of successes in the past, there was about 10 schools last year, so much? 10 schools in 2022, yes. Tell us a little bit as to how many we're aiming for this year, maybe, and perhaps what you hope to see. So this year, we're only doing five grants. So we mm. want to do five schools, five new schools within the area. Um, and part of that as well is to see how we can maximize as much as possible, right? We want to reach, and it'll be five outside of the 10 that we've done. So the right. 10 that we've done, we're not going to go back to those schools just yet. We've, we've, we've been looking at them and talking with them and seeing how their, um, their classes have been going and they're going fine and their equipment is still really great. So we want five new schools to have this experience. Um, next year, let's hope if we can get another five schools in, that'll be great. But our budget allows us to five and it's up to a hundred thousand dollars in, in, in funding so what that means is that you may not need the entire hundred thousand dollars some schools might just want a smart board some schools may already have computers you know but they want to use virtual reality and expose their children to to what that's like to learning in that kind of space so we're, we're open to hearing what the schools want from us and to working with the principals and the teachers in particular to see how we could really bring their students into the digital world and you know make sure that they can maximize and participate as best as they can. I'll take the opportunity to comment the foundation simply because the approach is very, very thoroughly <laughs> explored. <laughs> you're not just giving them things they can't use, you're not leaving them hanging, and you certainly have made the steps to make sure that it is functioning forward. You're not just going to go back to the same schools, it's reaching broader. You thought of everything. So <laughs> I like that. I, I think our CEO would be happy to hear that. And you said that, uh, and, and our mandate is leave, uh, creating a world where no one gets left behind. Mm -hmm. So this is really important because we also do technology centers in communities, in community centers, in panyards, in, in rural communities. So this is making sure that our students with special needs, that they are not left behind and it's there, it's available for them at school and the teachers can then maximize in their curriculum, learn use different aspects in terms of teaching and educating and, and it's just I think it's it's so cool for a young person right now in 2024 and to provide this kind of technology this opportunity for these schools is really something that they should jump on. Happy to have been uh, in any way instrumental in making sure that people meet that deadline yes. of next Monday as the Digital Foundation's Innovation Lab program continues. We will probably check in with you guys after that, but thank you for joining us. And let me take the opportunity to hopefully inspire you, our viewers, as today was perfection. We are saying thanks to Mr. Q again for joining us, to Natasha for coming back, the entire team on the floor, and of course, all of our Tobago guests. Reminding you guys that as much as we didn't get to do it today, all the birthdays from today will be deferred to tomorrow. And we will see you again on TTT in our morning show, your Friday edition. But for now, have a fantastic morning, a terrific Tuesday, mm, Tobago Thursday. <laughs> and we'll see you then until the next one. Bye, guys. <laughs>